This time on RPM, the Wexford Stages Rally, a two-day multi-championship event which has become something of a Celtic battle. It's Ireland against Wales on the southeast coast. It's an event which was first run 26 years ago. And the winner then, Billy Coleman in a Renault Alpine. This is one driver who won't be starting, but even so, there's a maximum entry for a rally which embraces no fewer than three championships. The South East Stages, the West Wales Championship, and of course, the UK's Ears Motorsport Motoring News Tarmac Championship. There's a tremendous array of driving talent and machinery, including Motoring News Champion Pete Doughty, who this year turned his attention to the Irish International Tarmac Series. I've really enjoyed the Tarmac Championship this year. Going up against the great names that are in there was really a, a treat. And um, I've, I've come back to this event uh, purely as a, um, a lesson to see just how much I've learnt this year. If, if, if I can uh, beat my old motoring news guys here, I shall know that at least I've gained some experience this year. OK, who's going to win? Um, either me or Eamon. Eamon, of course, is Wexford's own Eamon Boland. And we made a very slow start last year and Pete got away on the first day and then on the second day we had engine trouble so we were never really in contention right from the world goal last year. But hopefully we'll start quicker this year and won't have any problems with the car. Now that's not Michael Barrable, but he is here with the Silica. It's 1990 since I was last in Westford and uh, we finished second overall in it. Uh, we've, been, we've been contesting the Chorus National Championship this year. We haven't done a two-day rally since Wexford in 1990s. So we decided we'd, we'd take this in. It's a lovely event, very enjoyable. The last two occasions we were here, we finished second overall in it. Uh, this year I have Michael Joe Morrissey, who has the record of being the navigator, who has won it five years on the trot. So he wants to try and make it six, and I want to try and make it one. Meanwhile, the pressure is off for Welsh veteran John Price. Looking forward to this event very much. Um, Having uh, won the championship now, it leaves two rounds that I can go out and perhaps try drive harder than I probably have and try and win them as well. So yes, I'm looking forward to it. The flags are out for top seed and local hero Boland and Damien Morrissey as they lead the field away in their stunning WRC Ford Escort. And right behind are arch rivals Doughty and Lynn Jenkins. Then it's the Metro of Price and Mike Bowen. Followed at number four by the Toyota of Michael Barable and Mickey Morrissey. The Metro of Ray Breen and John Purcell at number five. Another Metro at six driven by the Welsh pairing of Tony Davis and Gareth Lloyd. The BMW M3 of Gwyndaf Evans, the other one, and Ryland James. Stephen Hendy and Mark Milton are at eight in their escort Cosworth. And at nine, Melvin Evans and Alan Davis in another M3 BMW. Our onboard experts have fitted cameras to two cars in this event. One is the Ashgrove Interparts Escort of Derek Smith and Dara Kavaki. And the other, the Yokohama Escort Cosworth of Willie Carroll and Eddie Myrna. Day one of the rally is west of Wexford and consists of a loop of three stages, Togmon, Adamstown and Galbally. They'll each have to be tackled three times during the day. The Welsh are here to support their heroes from the West Wales Rally Spares Championship and the photographers are already in place as we wait for the action to begin. Eamon Boland is appropriately number one in the rally, number one on the road and number one on the leaderboard as he powers the Hertz Escort through the first stage. He sets fastest time by a clear 10 seconds to move into the lead. By the end of the first loop he's extended his advantage to over 20 seconds. Pete Doughty was beaten by Bowling for the runners-up spot in the Tarmac Championship and he's here primarily to settle old scores. Unfortunately, Pete and Lynn Jenkins won't get the chance. They're third at the end of the first stage but crash heavily on the second. Both are taken to hospital as a precaution but suffer no serious injuries. Tony Davis in the Metro leads the Welsh Challenge in second place behind Boland. He's one second faster than Doughty on this first stage, but 24 down to leader Boland after three. John Price has scored many Irish victories in his 679 rally career, but for the moment, he's down in third place. 
Arable is slow to get fired up. He's in sixth after being off the road briefly on the first stage. But by the end of the loop, he's moved up to fourth and he's closing on the metros. PJ McGrath and Niall Furlong bring their fire-spitting escort into fifth place. But they're being hotly pursued by Terry Rook and Carl Sorensen. In fact, after three stages, they're tied on equal times. The dashing Gwyndaf Evans revives memories of the sights and sounds of Fisher and McHale in the early 90s as he fires his rear-wheel drive BMW up to seventh place. This is what rallying used to be like. And so's this. Ray Green slots his V6 engine Metro into eighth. He's ahead of the escort Cosworth of Lyndon Barton and Johnny Vance. And this is what rallying was like way back in the 70s. But this Mark II escort is still going strong in the hands of our in-car team, Smith and Cafferty. Long, absolute left, keep it going there, Spruce. Long, absolute left, absolute. 100, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Good man. It's absolutely fabulous stuff as they take the escort up to 10th place. However, things are not going quite so well for our other in-car crew. Let's go. Flat two left. Six to begin with, they rattle Caution. along nicely. Right and 20, long six right. Two left, 61 right, long six but right. Trouble is lurking just around the corner. Flat three left, cut. And 30, long two right, caution, 26 left. Long two right, 26 left. Six left. Six left. 30 crest and 30 double Fortunately, caution. Fortunately, the damage right. is fairly minor and they're quickly on their way. Flat two left. And they're right back into the action again, with the escort showing no ill effects from that little excursion. Turn six left, don't cut arrows. 300. Conditions on this part of the stage obviously very slippery, but all is going well for a while. However, six there right. is more trouble Five in store left, for Willie and Eddie. Long six right, don't cut. And a flat left. Keep it going. Somehow you get the feeling it's just going to be one of those days. Flat left. Meanwhile, back in service, John Price explains exactly what happened on stage two. Pete Doughty's accident, um, it was just about a mile in and we came across it, it was, it was nasty. Um, there was a lot of mud on a tightening left-hander and uh, you got caught out on it and it was, a, it was a nasty accident and the car was across the road and the pole and the wires were down when we got there and Pete was still in the car. He sort of, he, he was dazed a bit but he's okay, we got him out, um, that was what the delay was. The second loop begins with streaming wet stages, but the changing conditions makes little difference to Boland. He has the big WRC Escort under perfect control, sliding it through the corners and using its power down the straights to increase his lead. Price and the Metro are also at home on the wet roads, and they move up to second. But Davis begins to let things slip. This overshoot contributes to his drop back to third. And he's coming under increasing pressure from Barable, who closes the gap to just one second at the end of the second loop. But the treacherous conditions are beginning to take their toll, and Ray Breen is one of the first of the leading group to go. His Metro ends up pointing vertically up a bank. PJ McGrath joins him on the accident list, and out too goes the spectacular Evans when the BMW's engine fails. Tom Graham, meanwhile, has made his way back up to the top ten in his Escort Cosworth. And he even has time to signal a casual all's well to our camera crew as he slides the Escort round a slippery corner. But shortly afterwards, it all ends in tears, and the Escort is on a trailer. Tom has crashed out. But Dennis Cronin and Bob Kelly and the other M3 are starting to pick up the pace 
After a slow start, they're battling with Absolute Smith and Cafferty for the two-wheel drive honours. Really got the nose tucked in, it's only going to need a small taste. Oops, okay? just a minor blip there for the escort duo. And they're soon going at it absolutely hammer and tongs again. All the way, absolute right, absolute right, absolute left at the white cable. 40. Now, these were going, absolute crest into absolute left. Absolute left over crest again. 20. Absolute left and then very fast left. This was good. This is a very fast one. Good square right. This is great stuff from the escort duo, and now they're up to eighth place. By the end of the second loop, over two minutes covers the top five. And in that fifth place, it's Terry Rook. Michael Barrable is well clear in fourth although he's been unhappy most of the day with the handling of the Toyota. John Price and Mike Bowen have lost their second place to Davis again, and now they have Barrable just 10 seconds behind them and closing fast as the roads begin to dry out. switch back to intermediate tyres in the changing conditions has helped Tony Davis to recover his early pace and climb back to second. But there's no catching in a bowling. Crisp sounding Malcolm Wilson prepared escort is fastest on all nine stages and he ends the first day with a lead of well over a minute. Can he be on course for a Wexford win for the first time? Day two will tell. Meanwhile, Willie Carroll and Eddie Myrna are still rattling along. What is that noise? 60. That way, that way. Well, whatever is causing it, it's obviously getting to Eddie. He's having trouble following his own notes. 100. But soon they're back on course and heading for the finish. Despite their problems, which included that overshoot, a minor bump, a loose petrol tank, and now a damaged rear diff, the pair are still leading Group N. It's been quite a day. That's our David. But there's plenty more to come in day two, so stick around. Park Ferme at the start of day two of the Wexford Stages Rally. It's time for a final check before the action resumes. Leader Eamon Boland and fourth place Michael Barrable are pleased to see the sunshine. We had a very up and down rally yesterday. The weather's changing very much uh, in our favour today. Although we, we enjoyed the wet yesterday. We've reset the car and uh, the stage today suit my car an awful lot better. They're not as tight and as twisty as yesterday. And uh, yes, I have all good intention of uh, improving my position. Eamon, you're leading your home event, a minute and a half, uh, what's your plan for today? Yeah, we just want to try and uh, stay where we are and we're not going to foolish. You know, it's still only halfway over, so we just want to be careful and make sure we're bringing it home this evening. The second day stages are based around Ennis Corthy and for the moment all is serenity and calm. But what sort of drivers do they have in this part of the world? Again, the format for the day is straightforward. Three stages in a loop, Clone, Camolan and Kilrush and all to be completed three times. Eamon Boland is right. The rally is only half over. There's a lot of driving still to be done. It's 
Spectators take advantage of every viewing point as the fine weather brings the crowds out in force. But will they witness a home win? Poland is certainly flying again on the drier route and he continues to pull away from the rest of the field. In fact, by the end of the first loop, the gap has opened up to more than two minutes and he has the Wexford supporters on their feet and going up the walls. But there's trouble in store for Tony Davis. He maintains his second place through the first stage of the day with the Metro firing on all six cylinders. And he's going blinking quickly until a broken throttle cable leaves him stranded on stage 11. Second casualty of the day is Terry Brook who rolls his escort onto its side on stage 12 losing more than eight minutes. But now the battle for second is really raging. John Price is coming under intense pressure. Indeed, at the end of the first loop, he's in second place, but Farable has grabbed a share of it, and they're on level terms. Farable is a much happier man. The Toyota is handling better, and he says he's starting to drive to his potential. Certainly, he's looking a great deal more aggressive than the Price Metro. Further back, Steve Handy and Mark Milton have moved up to fourth. The Subaru legacy of Chris Griffiths and Alan Davis is into fifth place. And the overshooting escort of Lyndon Barton and Johnny Vance completes a new look top six. Gary Midwinter and Martin Saunders are seventh, just ahead of our leading in-car camera crew, Very Smith and Cafferkey. Absolute left over crest, Eric, and absolute right. A 20, fast right into medium left. Derek Cafferkey is the man on the notes, and he seems well in command of the situation. Don't overshoot this junction down here now. No. That's absolute still left, the well, leading two-wheel drive crew. Although the escort is occasionally right on the limits, right on the edge. However, they're being hotly pursued by Dennis Cronin's BMW, which is up to ninth. And pursuing them too, the Peugeot of Roy White and Des Cooney, one of Smith's main rivals for the Southeast Stages Championship. There's also another contender in their rear wheel drive battle, Melvin Evans and Alan Davis in their M3. However, out go another of our onboard camera crews, Willie and Eddie, retire their smoky escort with a blown turbo. Tom Holton and Tony Burke, meanwhile, indulge in a full blown but well controlled overshoot in the hard Subaru. However, the two Seamuses, Boland and Cullen, just get all locked up. By the end of the second loop, the rally has resolved itself into an Irish 1 2. Boland remains firmly out in front, still reeling off the fastest times and moving towards a two and a half minute advantage. And this rally he really is number one. But now it's Barable who's in pursuit. He's moved clear of Price's Metro and the Toyota is now firmly in second place. On a glorious day, it's looking good for an Irish victory in the Celtic battle. And everyone is here to enjoy themselves. After all, rallying can be real fun and games.
Lots of fun for some, but for Gordon Webster and Louis Stevens from Dublin, it all ends in bitter disappointment. There's nothing for it but to pack up and go home. One man who doesn't finish but still ends up a winner is Chris Jones. He's the new West Wales champion. Roy White is another who loses but still wins. He misses out on the Southeast title but still ends up winning his class. The top ten, which has remained fairly static over the final loop of stages, has a Welsh feel to its lower rungs. Dowie Bourne and David Jones bring their escort home in tenth place overall and head back to West Wales well pleased with their efforts. Melvin Evans and Alan Davis slide their BMW M3 into ninth place with a bump or two on the way. Then it's Lyndon Barton and Johnny Vance in their escort Cosworth. They had been as high as fifth, but they dropped back in the final loop to eventually finish in eighth. Still an A1 performance. Dennis Cronin and Bob Kelly put in a late charge to climb to seventh place. But they can't quite catch Derek Smith and Dara Kafferke. Our in-car team takes sixth place, and with it, they clinch the Southeast Championship. Very fast right at the very bottom, at the very bottom. Into absolute left. Keep it going, keep it going. Good Who man. says onboard absolute cameras right, are unlucky? Absolute left. Absolute right over crest. Go, 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 go. Yes, they've had an absolute, absolutely fabulous rally. Gary Midwinter brings his escort home in fifth place. While Stephen Hendy and his immaculate Ford Escort Cosworth secures the runners up spot in the Ears Motoring News Championship with his fourth overall. Third place for John Price. That gives him a maximum point score in the Ears Motoring News Series. That's a championship, of course, he'd already won for the seventh time. <laughs> and here's a bit of family support as wife and son cheer Michael Barrable home in second spot. Dublin is well pleased with his weekend work. The Wexford spectators have seen Eamon Boland make six attempts to win his home rally. This time, they've seen him win it and win it in style, having led from start to finish. It's been a long time ambition of Eamons to win this event. Finally, it's in the bag. The crowds are out in force at the finish to cheer their local hero home. Poland and Morrissey have dominated the event and even had the luxury of being able to drop the pace a little in the last couple of stages. 
Yeah, it's great to win it, you know, we were close enough in the past a few times, but never actually made it, but to make it is great. Delight too for the co-driver, who was actually born in Wexford. I'm absolutely delighted. Yeah, this, this is a great result for us and, and for Eamon and Andrew as well, for the whole team. It's, we had a great year this year, but to win Wexford like, really tops it off. It's super. Yeah, super result for the local team. Who, of course, can't resist the traditional champagne shower. <laughs> and confirmation of the result. Damon Boland and Damien Morrissey taking the honours. Michael Barable second and John Price third. And after the champagne, well, there's still a little time for some more flamboyant celebration. Oh, <laughs>